Welcome back to video 16 of the AR-15 high rail gas block machining video series. <clears throat> the next few videos are going to be sort of a series within a series and it's basically going to be how I designed and made uh, some soft jaws that are going to serve uh, numerous roles and I put a lot of thought into them and design work so this is going to be kind of going over that and uh, what they do and how I made them and things like that. All right, so first of all, <clears throat> what do we know about soft jaws? Pretty much uh, all we know is the bolt pattern here that goes into the vise. So starting with that, we can design uh, we can design our dimensions around this. So I wanted soft jaws that were going to be wide enough to hold um, the eight gas blocks that I do per run so I can mill the backs of them off. So <clears throat> that uh, giving a little leeway on the sides, that equates to about eight and a half inches. So let's go ahead and turn on my fixed vice jaw right there. So um, it's made out of, I call them soft jaws, uh, these are not aluminums, they're sort of, uh, I guess you call them hard soft jaws or soft hard jaws. They're made out of hardened 4140 steel and uh, I, I did them that way mainly because this is the steel that I use to make the gas blocks and I wanted to just use the same bars that I've been buying to make the gas blocks. Uh, so that's what I did. <clears throat> I ordered some steel, and uh, this is eight and a half inches long, and I ordered them in 12 inch length, so I was able to cut some off the end and still have enough uh, material left over for a gas block. So this is eight and a half inches long. These are two and a half inches tall, <clears throat> and this is a standard uh, bolt pattern for Kurt vices. I have a glacier and vice, but it's the same uh, bolt pattern. So let's uh, just turn off our pipe. Vice bolts, there we go. So uh, what I did was, um, <clears throat> since I don't have uh, parallels that that are 8 inches wide, uh, or that go all the way up to 2.5 inches, I decided to just design in and machine its own parallels. Um, so after I face the the bar square, I just kind of mill into it with a, an end mill. I mill all this away and I leave a step here. So that's my parallel. Then I drill and I uh, kind of <clears throat> countersink these holes a little bit so the bolt heads fit in there. And we won't get into this in this video, maybe the next video. Um, but I machined a channel back here, and I see, and I put two holes right there that don't go completely through. So we'll talk about what that's for in a later video. So this is pretty basic. Um, where it got complicated was with the movable vice jaw. I'll go ahead and turn that one on. So as you can see, it's a similar setup uh, with the parallel as the fixed vice jaw and uh, the bolt heads are recessed obviously uh, the difference is this one has a whole bunch of holes in it so it has eight holes across the top and eight holes across the bottom and they're spaced a little bit differently um, the holes across the top are 1.05 inches apart and the holes across the bottom are one inch apart and for this video we're just going to talk about the top holes I'll talk about what the bottom ones are for in a later video okay so what are these for alright I need to mill the back tab off the gas blocks that I've made and uh, now that they're mostly machined they're a very odd shape to try to grip onto and and grip I you know you can put them in a vise one at a time but 
I want to be able to hold them all at one time. So let's turn on the gas blocks. So there they are. So I designed these so that this step is just high enough to catch uh, the face of the gas block, which is square to the rest of it, and yet allow the top of the gas block to be higher than the vice jaw. Obviously, we don't want to cut into our vice jaws. So, uh, this is all fine and great. The rail index is uh, against the um, fixed jaw here. But how are we going to clamp the dang thing? This bayonet lug is kind of protruding out. And I didn't want to mill a big channel here uh, because, well, I'll, I'll get into it later. But basically, if you can see here, this is a flat area, but it's not it's not very okay the problem is if there's any variation between the length of any one of these and you clamp the face of this vice jaw against it you're inevitably going to have some that are loose it's basically going to pinch the the longest one i mean we're talking even tenths here it's going to pinch the longest one and all the rest of them will be loose and i've I've tried this with uh, other things, not these gas blocks, but I've tried to hold multiple uh, parts in a vise, and unless they're exactly the same dimension, it's just not going to work right. So that's what these holes are for. So if you look through the holes, they're centered on the sling swivel socket of each one of those things. And there is a flat in the bottom of it, which would be great for clamping on. So because I can't clamp them all at once with the movable jaw, what I've done is I drill those holes and I'm, I'm going to tap them. And we're going to have something that looks like this. So there will be eight independent bolts that you can tighten down independently of the vice jaw. That way, if there's one loose, or if all of them are loose and one's tight, it doesn't matter because you can individually tighten each one. And it holds the, it makes sure that the, uh, the top of the gas block here, or actually the back side of the gas block, I'm going to call it the top, it makes sure that it's clamped securely against the fixed vice jaw so that everything is nice and square. Well, there's how I get my steel. It's about 80, 89 pounds of steel. Let's take it on back. All right, we got it in here. Let's pop it on open and take a look. So I got 10 bars. It's uh, 12 by one by two and a half. Let me just verify that. It's usually, I found it's usually just a tiny bit oversized, which is great. So the first thing I did, I want to make these uh, soft jaws <clears throat> about, uh, what was it, eight and a half inches. So uh, I marked just outside of eight and a half inches and uh, time to saw it up.
There goes my blade. Look at that. That's the second blade that's done that to me. This is the Harbor Freight bimetal blade, so somebody can recommend a better quality bimetal blade, please do so. These all seem to just snap after a while. All right, just to get through the rest of this bar to get me back in business, I put I put in the saw blade that came with it, which which I hear sucks, but we'll see if we can make it through this block. I'm prepared for failure. Sure, what's going on there? Well, made it. I guess we'll use it until it breaks. Okay, so moving right along, uh, these are just some uh, fast motion video footage of uh, just various milling operations on the uh, device jaws. I was just cutting it to length there and I'm, here I'm using a brand new uh, Lakeshore Carbide half inch fire plug rougher. And um, I'm playing this in real time here just because it has a funny grumbly coggy kind of sound to it. And maybe I'm just uh, running the RPM too slow or something. I'm not sure, but uh, it cut fine. It just sounded weird. Then I finished the um, inside channel with a quarter inch end mill. I spot and drill the two holes. And then these are the two holes for the vice bolts. Drilling with the same 14 millimeter drill I drill the gas blocks with. Which that's something I think I'll invest in in the future is a carbide 14 millimeter drill because that I should be able to run the RPM higher and save a lot of time. Because I, I use that thing a lot. I'm just facing off the uh, inside of the fixed vice jaw here. And then I go back and do a finish pass of, I think the depth was four thousandths for the finish. Then I milled the uh, counter, or it counter sunk those holes there. Then I finish everything with that quarter inch end mill going really nice and slow. It leaves a beautiful finish. I go over it twice just to make sure it's as smooth as can be. Then I uh, finish the interior of those vice bolt holes. Just the countersunk part. And again, it just leaves a beautiful finish. Now I ran into an issue where I had to double check my tram. And uh, I ended up getting it just right. That was the x-axis. This is the y-axis. Um, it's pretty much perfectly square. I mean, within a couple of tenths over six inches, if that. Uh, and I had to um, shim the spindle a little bit. I had to adjust one of the shims by actually sanding it down a little bit because uh, something like nine and a half thousandths was too much and nine thousandths was too little. I really needed... Uh, 9.25 thousandths and I ended up I didn't have a shim of that size so I had to take a shim and sand like uh, half a thousandths off of it I'm just drilling all the holes after they've been spotted I spotted them deep enough to leave a nice big chamfer
This is one of the drills I got from that big cobalt drill kit from Harbor Freight. It's like 99 bucks. Pretty much every drill up to half inch is in there. In fact, it might even go bigger than that. I can't remember. But there's like a lot of drills in there. I see the same thing in the Enco catalog for like $400. All right, I have to tap these by hand. Um, man, I really wish I had rigid tapping. Even if I did, I'm not sure if it would be able to handle uh, tap that size through steel. Because it took a lot of force to, to do that. I had to go out and buy another tap because those cheap cobalt taps from Lowe's just don't cut it. So that's a uh, Irwin tap from Ace. I'm uh, spotting and drilling the two bolt holes for the, the vice bolts. This is the back side of the movable jaw. Then I use that same fire plug end mill to just kind of uh, go over it to recess the face a little bit so I can leave a built in parallel. Still kind of sounds grumbly and coggy. I'm not really sure why. It might have something, I might have to tighten my spindle belt up or something. Maybe that has something to do with it. Because I seem to hear that a lot on these larger end mills. So that milling got me a few chips on the uh, serrated teeth of the flutes again just like with the other one so I'm doing something wrong here to where I can't seem to to mill anything without chipping the little teeth maybe if somebody has any advice for me I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong I think Carl at Lakeshore Carbide uh, thinks I'm running the spindle RPM too fast and I'm not clearing chips properly which is probably right but I'm nervous to turn the RPM down too low because that increases your chip load and, and everything sounds more strained on my mill. I think these are just some images of... Yeah, these things turned out beautiful. They look like uh, works of art or something. The finish I'm able to get with that quarter inch end mill is just amazing. So then I mount the vice jaws and I face off the top so they're both the exact same uh, height at two and a half inches. And then here I'm just showing sort of the concept behind how these are going to mount. So these are some bolts I ordered from McMaster. By the way, ordering these type of bolts from McMaster is much cheaper than getting them from Ace or Lowe's. These are stainless steel socket head cap screws. So I just had two of them here. I was just going to show the concept. So the, the um, I don't know, the forecastle, whatever you want to call it, the buttress of the gas block sits square on the uh, fixed vice jaws parallel and then the flight deck of it where the rail is pushes up against that the fixed vice jaws face so everything is nice and square 
then I actually just snug the the uh, movable vise down onto the bayonet lug and then tighten the bolts up top and that kind of holds it from multiple I guess it has multiple pinch points so to speak feels very rigid the hand so another thing I did was I picked up some galvanized sheet metal and I uh, kind of cut it into strips because I ha have all sorts of problems with the chips packing in the lead screw of the vise as you can see it's exposed there and then I can't turn the vise and I have to take it all apart and blast it out with a water hose for like an for I don't know 20 minutes to get all the chips out just so I can turn the lead screw so I put a piece of uh, galvanized steel there and I cut it cut a few pieces of different lengths so I can fit it right down in that slot to keep the chips out of there so now we're ready to test mill them I put them on the end there and I got them down pretty much as rigidly as I could get them with those bolts <clears throat> now I wanted to do pretty much a full depth of cut here to uh, well to save time but also to save the end mill from unnecessarily cutting multiple Z levels if it can handle it in one. And it handles it just fine. This is a 3 8 inch uh, fire plug from Lakeshore Carbide. It handles it just fine, but there's so much load being exerted onto the piece that it, I could tell it pushed over and kind of canted a little bit, so I stopped the program there. So then I set it back up again and uh, decided to give it another go. Clamped it down a little bit tighter. I took the other one out of there. almost a quarter inch depth of cut there, 60% step over. This end mill was already kind of worn and chipped a little bit when it got to this point. But see, there's a problem right there. These tabs kind of separate from the workpiece and they fall off. And when the end mill hits them, it's bad news. So I, I forgot about the overhangs over the sides. That also still canted a little bit, I think. So I decided to take that other one and come up with something a little bit more rigid just to test with the other one. The finish is not bad, but you can tell it's not square when you, when you look at it, when you feel it. So what I did was I took a, a bolt and ran it up right through the middle and then put a, a nut on the top. Um, it just happened to line up with one of the T-slots. So I tightened it down. This was just a test to see if this was going to hold it rigid enough. And this seems to hold it much more rigidly. I don't see it shifting or anything like that. But again, we still have this problem here where it sort of separates and then, then it's just kind of like a loose cannon. It'll, it's going to damage the end mill if it hits it. Okay, that didn't work. Um, that end mill exerted too much lateral force on the part, and it just pushed it to the side, and it was causing uh, it to kind of teeter and not cut square. And that's because uh, this clamping mechanism is not rigid enough to hold these. Even though the bolt goes through this sling swivel uh, socket hole, which sort of uh, limits how far it can 
move from side to side. It uh, it still wobbles a little bit, and and uh, and you can tell it didn't cut square, and there's like little cut lines. So I had to think of something else. Um, this bolt, even though it holds it pretty securely, it just doesn't hold it rigidly enough. So what I came up with was uh, this. This is sort of my idea. Let me turn off my my spot on windows. There we go. And turn these off. So this is what I came up with. This is just three bars of steel uh, with eight uh, holes drilled in them, spaced the same as these bolts up here. Uh, so my idea was to drill and tap these holes, and these cross members will hook on the underside of the overhang of these vice jaws, and thus it will sit flush with the vice bed. This bar right here will sit on the vice bed, and it can't lift up. So, <clears throat> so let's turn the gas blocks back on. So if you uh, look, you can see that uh, it just clears, so it doesn't, uh, when you tighten a bolt down, it'll be pulling against, it'll be pulling the gas block down against this parallel. So then I got to thinking, this is going to be hard to slip a washer down in each one of those things. So I found these, and these are called uh, flange sleeve bearings. And that's actually what color they are. Turn the gas blocks off. So they're basically a bearing, but I'm going to use them as a washer that has uh, sort of a a cylindrical aspect to it so they can slide down into the bore of the of the gas block and they'll stay there they won't shift around or anything and then drop a bolt down through there which will thread into the bar so if we turn the gas block back on you can kind of see how that's going to hold it now this should be rigid enough so let's make this thing and here it is. I thought I'd filmed some of the some of the process of making it, but I guess not. Couldn't find the footage anywhere anyway. But it was a pretty simple thing to make. I think I made it in a couple of hours. And then it just uh, goes on the other side of the uh, vice jaws. Now here I had to modify those um, flange bearings a little bit just so they clear the radius of the gas block and sit flush. And then here I'm actually milling the um, the tips of those socket head uh, cap screws flat because they have sort of like a ring on there where the the at the factory when they cut them off it leaves a ring. I didn't want that. I wanted them to be flat so there is as much uh, purchase as possible when screwing them down. And there's what they look like. These are 18.8 stainless steel. There they are actually installed in the jaw. Okay, so I changed the direction of the uh, the milling to where it goes this way because it seems when it's cutting the majority of the force is actually sideways to the direction of cut so it's actually pushing it up into the fixed vice jaw right now and I also uh, increased the finish depth from four thousandths to ten thousandths just because this is a, a rather aggressive cut on a part that's not held very securely comparatively to other things so any kind of movement in that gas block leaves cut marks and I found that the cut marks are actually deeper than four thousandths because when I did this before with a 4,000 finish pass, it still left some cut lines in it. 
So I bumped it up to 10 thousandths and that worked a lot better. I just wanted to do one to start out with, just to test it and make sure that it was all going to go well. And it also sort of eliminates the problem with that overhang hanging off. Now I also kind of modified the um, tool path a little bit to where, uh, well you'll, you'll see in a second, but there is a piece of overhang that separates, but I, I did the tool path to where that's not going to be a problem. So here's sort of the process of loading them in there. I load the flange bearing in the bore and I face the flat side up against that uh, radius, internal radius there, so it sits flush. Now I have six left, but this will hold eight. Then I have the bolts protruding a little bit. I start to close the vise and that sort of lines everything up because those the bolts fit through that um, hole fairly snug. Not, not snug, but there's not a whole lot of play. And then I just make sure they're all seated against the parallel and the flight deck is pushed up against the uh, fixed vise jaw. <clears throat> then I drop the bolts down in and I had to uh, slightly decrease the diameter of the bolt heads just by chucking it in a drill and then running the drill at full RPM against uh, a spinning grinding wheel just a little bit. They, they almost fit but they would just kind of wedge. And if I'd move my stupid arm you could... there you go, you can see what I'm doing there. So I just snug them down. I snug the uh, movable jaw up against the bayonet lug. Sort of pinch it there. give a few taps to make sure they're all seated square. Then I tighten those uh, socket head cap screws down on the inside and that pulls it tight down against the parallel. But when you do that it sort of pulls the flight deck away from the fixed vice jaw. So then I come in and uh, then I tighten these bolts which pushes the flight deck back up against the, the fixed vice jaw and makes sure everything is nice and square. And then once they're all snug, I can actually tighten them all down using the vice handle. And here's kind of what it looks like from the side. Alright, let's see how she does. Now keep in mind, this is a pretty badly worn end mill has plenty of chips in it and this isn't the most forgiving kind of cut because it's highly interrupted and that was one of the reasons I, I uh, cut in the Y direction previously was uh, I thought there would just be less interruptions and in trying to mill across eight parts at a time but turns out this is a better way after all So there's overhang on the side nearest us, which is not a problem because it mills it off in that first pass. And then the second pass, it's cutting through the overhang material, so there's nothing overhanging here. So this is highly, highly interrupted here because it's going through eight of them plus the bores. So that's just, this is not uh, very fun for an end mill to do this.
Now you can hear it start to bog down. And that's because this end mill is so worn and has so many chips in it that it's actually bogging the spindle motor down a little bit. Which is the first time I've really heard it do something like that. And I, I looked at the load meter and it was getting up to like 40% which it's usually about 17 to 23 percent. Now here's what I was talking about. There is a big overhang there, but I have the end mill just clearing the edge to where it separates it and kicks it away. And uh, I didn't want that piece falling down in between the gas block and the vise and the wedging there and then having the end mill hit it. So this way, since the end mill is just barely clearing that edge, it sort of just kicks it out of the way. And then a 10,000 finish pass. Now this kind of revealed another problem. One of these, or one or two of the gas blocks, it milled all the material off to where it was a 0 .750 bore exposed. All the other ones, there's still a lip on the inside. And I remember when I drilled and reamed these, the end mill that I milled the hole out with was so worn that um, when the reamer went down to ream the hole, it actually bogged the reamer down and then got stuck before it went down to the deep enough depth. But not a big deal. I just used the reamer and popped those lips back off. So there they are. Then I can do just some manual deburring right there. And then uh, there's what what it looks like on the barrel before it's been finished and, or blasted or anything like that. There's with the sling swivel socket in there. All right. Well, thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next video.